I see a lot of comments specifically on the Game Boy subreddit where people are linking Colin's video uh, where he tests two Game Boy Advance consoles, one backlit and one of them stock. He, he runs them head to head on a fresh pair of batteries each, sees which one lasts longer. Now, it's a really cool video and there's nothing inherently wrong with it except that there are two major different types of Game Boy Advance consoles. There's the 32 pin variants where literally it's just the screen has 32 pins on it and then the 40 pin variant where the screen has 40 pins. Uh, now one of the major differences between the consoles, this is a 40 pin motherboard here, this console has an extra voltage regulator right here on the motherboard. The 32 pin version does not have this. You'll look at the front and you'll just see these three chips here, the SRAM, the CPU, and the crystal. This chip is responsible for powering the 40 pin screen. Uh, it also does something else. I'm not 100% sure. I've looked at the schematic, but Unfortunately, I'm not exactly that familiar with what I'm looking at. Uh, anyway, I believe that this chip is responsible for making the console basically use more power. Um, there's probably other things within the other custom silicon, like the actual power regulator of the Game Boy itself, this guy right here. Uh, this is probably built to work with this one. Um, and then there's the amp that might be different I don't know this is all custom silicon I don't have access to the schematics of any of these actual chips so I don't know how they work regardless the two Game Boy Advance consoles are not the same now right here I have a despite how it looks a perfectly stock almost as it was how I got it Game Boy Advance this is a 40 pin model um, I want to show specifically that backlighting the console does not decrease the amount of power that it uses, but in fact increases it. This is a game, a reproduction Game Boy Advance SP AGS101 screen, and it's already attached to a ribbon cable, a 40 pin ribbon cable with the brightness switch here. Uh, this came out of another one of my Game Boys, same as this motherboard that I've been flashing around. Uh, that Game Boy is currently not working, but the screen itself is fine, so we can use it for testing this thing. Um, but that Game Boy is another video entirely. I got this a few days ago. I already took it apart and cleaned it because it was gross. It was kind of sticky when I got it, and that just doesn't make for a good video. But all I've done is physically clean the shell, and when I put it back together, I put it back together with these buttons I had because, I, I don't know, I wanted to see how it would look. I thought it would look cool. Uh, this start select has to come out. It's going back in my Latios, Latios reproduction Game Boy. Um, but, you know, again, just wanted to see how it looked. I forgot to put in that little LED light pipe, so got to take it apart anyway. And this particular console has an issue. Um, basically, it's a, the dirty power switch issue where you turn it on. And you know that the power light will flicker a little. It's going to be hard to see because I forgot to put that light pipe back in. I have it right here. I just, you know, me being a dunce. Anyway, uh, so this console needs to come apart because I want to swap out these buttons. I need to clean that power switch and I need to reinstall that light pipe there. Um, quite frankly, for the $10 I paid for this thing, it cleaned up pretty nice. I got it not working. And go figure it worked just fine it's just the power switch is kind of flaky so first thing oh shoot I'm sorry I thought I had a game just a moment let me go grab one all right got a regular Pokemon Emerald cart here just I'm gonna use the same cart across all the tests just to keep it consistent put this in it's already got a fresh set of batteries Flip it on, see how it doesn't come on. Kind of got to wiggle the switch until you get it just right. There we go. So I promise this thing is completely unmodified. This is how it is. And apparently sometimes it just doesn't boot games even though it's on. So you got to turn it off and restart it. Sometimes you got to reseat the cart. 
but you know what? It'll be good enough for our purposes here. Maybe there's something wrong with the cart reader on this thing. It was pretty dirty when I got it. Like I said, it was sticky. No Game Boy should be sticky. There it goes. Now it's working. Um, I did clean it up physically. Like I, I just wiped. I, I took the shell off, put in a bath of soapy warm water, um, you know, old toothbrush, the works. But the motherboard itself, literally all I did was wipe it off. It was dusty. I've done nothing else. So even though I have it running on regular lithium, or excuse me, alkaline batteries, I'm not going to be using those for the test. I'm going to be using my, um, my cat's paw here. All it is is just a lithium ion battery in there with a charge circuit and then three leads coming out. One of them is the ground, of course. And the other is the raw 4.2 volts of a fully charged battery, which this should be fully charged. And then the others run through a diode just to drop the voltage down a little bit. The Game Boy Advance does not like the full voltage of a lithium ion battery and it will not boot unless you get it dropped down a little bit. Lithium ion batteries work from, I don't know what, like three volts to 4.2, give or take, depending on the exact chemistry. Um, the nominal voltage, which most people think of as 3.7 volts, technically is 3.6 volts. Uh, that's just about the halfway point when your battery's at about 50% charge. It's not exactly linear, so it's not exactly 50%, but you know, it's still the halfway point between the the, uh, the poles there. Ah, excuse me. I mean, let me get this bad boy apart. If I can get that last screw. There it goes. Screwdriver wasn't gripping. So like any other Game Boy Advance, there are six tri-wing screws on the back and then one Phillips screw in the battery compartment there. I've just loosened all six tri-wing screws. I'm going to spread them everywhere when I flip this over. Let me get that last screw, number seven there. All right, or I don't even have to flip it over. I don't know what I'm talking about. Just set that aside. Preferably someplace where you'll knock it over and then lose the screws. That's what I like to do anyway. Okay. I'm going to take this stuff out, just set it aside, and two more Phillips screws to get the motherboard out, because that's all we need. Well, and the screen. Motherboard and the screen. But I'll be taking those out separate from each other. Just release this bale here. It slides up that way, and then... Usually you can slide the ribbon cable out, or if you already took the screws of the motherboard out, you can flip it over and just pull it straight out. That's what I like to do, a little bit easier. Okay. And then to get the screen out, this one's already been removed because like I said, I cleaned this up. But the easiest way to do it is just physically flex the front casing, and then one of the corners of the screen will pop up. Stick your finger under there and then just continue prying it up there. All right, so now I'm gonna stick the screen back on here. Oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to talk about, probably should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, is how a dirty power switch can affect how much power your console is using. In fact, that was the main point of this video since I have not cleaned this switch up yet. But, you know, I'm all about scripts. All right. Get my multimeter out. Again, just cheap Harbor Freight nonsense. Gonna set it to 200 milliamps. Accurate or not, it doesn't really matter as long as it's consistent, which it is. All we care about is whether the numbers go up or down. All right, so I'm gonna run, I'm just gonna clip the battery ground to one of my leads here. Stick the other lead 
in this ground pin here. I'm going to try and stick it between the springs so I don't move it about and lose it. And then I'm going to stick my diode voltage on to the positive pad and flip it on. Or not. There we go. Kind of get it. Got to get it in between there. So the game's booting. Can't see it too well because I guess the screen is beyond being not backlit. It is kind of fucked up there. Can you see that? No, can't see that at all. Anyway, just going through the title sequence of the game. Good enough. You can see it's using about 97, 98 milliamps. I'm going to flip that off. Just try and flip it on with no game. Again, just as a baseline. We're getting nice even 68 milliamps. Now if I touch this switch at all, you can see it goes all over the board. And the game resets, of course. If it's all the way on, it doesn't even work. Anyway, this is a relatively common issue with these Game Boys. The power switch itself, I mean, it's not a terrible design. Um, the problem is, you know, I'm just going to set this aside since I'll be using it in a moment. The problem is, and this is... This is why modern electronics do it a little bit differently. But the problem is that this switch, all of the current that this Game Boy is using is running through this switch. So every time you're switching this, it's switching the hundred some odd milliamps that this thing is using. Now, that's fine and dandy if the switch is rated for that. But you know, over time, you get just a little bit of carbon buildup on the contacts. And it, I'm gonna remove this screen so I don't, so I can maneuver this a little bit easier. Okay. But anyway, over time you just get carbon buildup on the contacts, and it, it ends up increasing the resistance of the contacts, which will then increase the amount of power that this thing uses just to operate. And in some cases, it'll increase it to a point where it doesn't even work anymore. So as far as getting into these power switches go, you just stick a sharp object in there. Usually a box cutter is better than a knife, but a knife's what I have handy. And then just desolder one side, and then once you've got that one side up, you can kind of grab it and then uh, desolder the other side there. Now, when you're doing this, you should be a little bit more careful not to uh, bend that. It's just going to make your life a little bit harder when you go to put it back together, but I'll just try and bend it back right now. Good enough. Okay, set this aside. Don't lose it. This is the part we want to pay attention to. I'm going to flip that off. don't know how well you can see that on camera, but those should be shiny copper or bronze or whatever they are. I'm pretty sure they're copper contacts. You should be able to see your reflection in them pretty much. What I like to do to clean them up, Take a clean, fresh cotton swab and some isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to saturate this cotton swab in alcohol here. And just rub it in there. All you need to do is take off the carbon buildup. You don't have to do anything too intense. You want to do this when you get your Game Boy open because it's kind of a pain in the ass. All right, now I'm going to do this switch here. There's a little wiper, a little metal wiper embedded in the plastic there. I'm just sticking my knife into the wiper itself to hold it down and then wiping off with the cotton swab there. It's not cleaning up the whole thing, but all you need to clean up are the actual contact part that slides across the... Uh, contacts. 
I guess. I don't I don't know the exact terminology of this part. I know it's a wiper, but I don't know what they call the part that contacts the contacts. Because contact doesn't sound right. You say contact enough, you start getting somatic satiation, or however the hell you say that. I can't even speak tonight. I'm sorry. You know, when you say a word enough times and it stops sounding like that word. Anyway, I guess at this point I'm just talking to hear the sound of my own voice. Oop, move that over. Alright. Get that back here. Now sometimes it's it's hard to get the edges there just because this is big and doesn't really fit in there. One thing I like to do is cut the end off and then just use the, the end of the cotton swab. This only really works if you're using the cardboard style swabs. If you're using those wooden ones, I don't know if it'll work. It probably will. Uh, but if you're using those plastic ones, it will not work at all. You can just kind of rub that on there. You can see the end of the swab is getting dirty there. I'm just going to snip it again. Now, usually with this sort of thing, it really doesn't have to be perfect, but given how much of a pain in the ass it is to get in here, I'm going to try my damnedest so I, to make sure I don't have to get back in here. Alright, I'm going to snip that off one more time. Get a little bit of rubbing alcohol on here. Well, that's a wonderful noise, isn't it? I apologize for this noise. But it's working great. It's working way better than doing it dry. Anyway, good enough for now. I think that'll do. You can see it's a lot better just from looking at it. You can see the reflection. Yeah. Okay. So to put this back together, I'm going to put my knife away before I hurt myself. Drop your slider switch back in there. Make sure nothing else is in there that shouldn't be, which I guess the only thing that should be in there is the slider switch. Some of these uh, shields are directional. This one in particular isn't. I forgot to mention that when taking that off. If they are directional, you want to try and make sure you put it back on the same way. If not, obviously it doesn't matter. Uh, if you bent yours like a moron, like I did, um, it helps to try and angle the legs in so that instead of being perfectly parallel, they're kind of angled like that if that's the top there. Okay. And you can just sort of snap that on. I like to only snap on one side at a time. And they don't always snap right on. Sometimes there's a little bit of a solder pool. So I like to hold it with my thumbnail. And try and melt that solder pool and push down with the iron. You have to be real careful when doing this because this thing gets real hot real quick. I mean, the soldering iron is only what, like 500 degrees Fahrenheit? Give or take. Okay. That's that side. Flip it over. Do the exact same thing. You should not need to add more solder. You can if you want. I don't recommend it. Um, one thing I may have forgotten to do 
if you're getting real vigorous cleaning out those contacts, you probably bent them a little. I think I did so, so I don't know if this is going to work when I put it back together. I might have to take that apart again. Okay, reinstall that. Get the multimeter back out. Turn it on. Still plugged in the same way. Game Boy is off. That's in the springs. And, oop, that's the wrong one. Game Boy won't boot with that. There we go. And, let's see if it works. Nope. Oh, I bet it needs to be pushed down. Yeah. Yeah, I need to angle those contacts down a little bit more. What was it at before, though? Wasn't it at, like, some 68? Now it's down to 60, 62? Okay, let me... Let's fix that. Just one of many reasons why you should script your video, or at least cut them instead of just uploading them whole. I do know how to cut video. I just don't really care. I don't mind showing when I mess up. Everyone messes up. Take it off the same as before. Try not to be a fucking barbarian. don't bend these things when taking them off. I don't know what, I, what the hell I'm doing today. Maybe it's because I'm filming it. Okay. But I forgot to do this. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to press and hold it down with my finger, take my knife, and slide it up underneath the contact. Just kind of bend it up a little bit. It's springy. So it's going to kind of bounce back. Now that I've bent the one side, if I push it down. Oh, this one's not doing it. Okay, well, I'll just do the same thing with the other side. I was going to say these things usually like to pop on out. So you can usually just bend one side and then when you set it flat, it'll even itself out. But this one's not doing that. So just bend both sides. Now you can see... I don't know how well you can see, but you can see it's sticking up a lot more now. I accidentally pressed it flat when I was cleaning it. Stick that back in there, and now you can see the wiper itself is, or the slider is, is uh, sticking out a little. Another thing you can do to help out with that is bend this into sort of like an M shape where you push the top down. Now that's how they're supposed to be from the factory. And do the same thing once again. I'm going to hold that down with my thumbnail and then just press it into place with the soldering iron tip. And try to use your thumbnail and not the actual pad of your thumb because like I said these things get hot very quick in a hurry. burn yourself like it. Oh, that's a lot better. It was flopping around in the port now. Nice. Now it's nice and, and uh, smooth and secure. Oh, see, here's, here's probably what's wrong with my screen. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. Well, you can see that the contacts aren't consistent. You know what? No, I'm not going to clean that. 
I should clean that. But for the sake of the test, I won't clean that. Because the test is whether or not cleaning that power switch does anything. Not whether cleaning the screen does anything. So I'll clean it after this real quick. This back up here. It's a negative probe. And the positive one. Kind of backwards. Oops, I left it on, but you can see no touching. It's working. And it's even lower than before now. And now we're at just less than 60 milliamps. I don't know how well you can see. I think you can see it good enough. And, well, tapping it that first time reset it, but you can see now I'm being rough with it. It's still on. Went up a little. Switch it off. Switch it on. Off. On. Nice and reliable now. Switch that off. Let's try the game out. Switch it on. Hey, look, it booted the game. Or at least I think it did. Let's find out in a second. Yeah, booted the game. First try. See, it's using... I'll wait till it gets to that, uh, the running through the field or whatever. Haven't touched the volume. Everything else is the same. It's at 85, 86. What was it at? 90 something. Of course, I moved the meter. It goes up, but it jumped back down. So I think we've lost 10 milliamps, give or take. I think that'll do. Turn this off now. Unplug this. Take the game out so that I can unplug this. Set that aside because I will be reinstalling it in a moment. Plug in this wonderful backlit screen. Now I like to use the uh, switched ribbons from a seller on eBay called Lee Chan 1985, I believe it is. Uh, I've had a lot of good luck with those and not so much good luck with the other ones. Uh, you don't even have to solder this if you don't want. In fact, before I solder it, let's test it out. Just for, uh, for funsies there. All talk, no show, right? Okay. Switch that on. See, look, works just fine. You can see my power usage hasn't actually gone up that much. It's gone up like three, four milliamps. This switch, of course, isn't going to do anything. Switch it over. Nothing. Switch it back. Nothing. Doesn't change the brightness. Doesn't affect the power usage because this switch is hooked up to this wire. If this wire is not hooked up, of course, it does nothing. Well, I've still got that. Let's double check with the game. I don't know how well you can see that screen. Just for proof, the screen is working. It's working nice. Looks way better than the other one. Move the meter over so you can see that too. And we're like, I don't know, two milliamps. When I'm done filming, I'll review the video and uh, average these numbers out so we get some good numbers there. But we're right about where we were. My original point that I was trying to make was that adding in this screen does not magically decrease the amount of power your Game Boy uses. But just for, uh, just for science sake, let's get this soldered in, even though I have no intention of keeping it. Well, actually, maybe I will. And I'll just put this back together in my Latios, Latios Game Boy case, and we'll call it a 
call it a day. Just trying to strip the end of that, despite the fact that I have wire cutters or wire strippers <sighs> sitting right here. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's entirely too long. I don't need that much. It's still a little bit long, but I can work with that. It's going to be okay. In the end there. And you should get a fume extractor when you're doing this kind of work. This goes to the left leg of the rightmost component labeled DA1, I believe it is. This is in a bad position. Whenever you're soldering like this, you should always move your components to work for you instead of trying to twist and contort yourself. Uh, luckily, as a lefty, I'm used to doing stupid shit like that. So I think it's going to be fine. Not looking for perfection. Literally just want to get that soldered in so we can test it out and try it out. Okay, move the solder, put it down here, plug the meter back in, move that screw on the off chance it does exactly what it just did. Just stick to the speaker. Okay. Plug that in, you can see the meter. We've got the switch hooked up now. It's up. You can see it's using a little bit more power. I have no idea if it's on high or low. I think it's on low. I'm going to switch it over. With this. Hold it down. Oh, that's not working at all. Okay. Try and get in there. Okay, if I flip that up, I can still flip it. Okay. So we're at, I don't know, 69.6, about 10 milliamps above what it was. Flip that into low. I guess it was on high. It's not that bright. Okay, now we're down to 61.9, which is pretty much where we were. Flip that off. Just for testing purposes. Pop the same game back in there. Flip it on. And it's looking like pretty much the same story. Which I guess, if we're going by scientific method, my hypothesis was that backlighting a console doesn't actually decrease the power usage, but cleaning the power switch will. We were right. I flipped the switch uh, back over to high. Meter jumped up. Uh, seven, eight milliamps. I think that should do it. I guess at this point now, I'll go ahead and put this back together. Uh, I'm going to put this thing back together in my uh, reproduction custom shell that has been piling up under projects here because I really like this Game Boy. I want to put it back together ever since I broke the original one. So uh, 